Okay, so in a previous video, I demonstrated that the hunting lodge was a confusing mess. I decided to go ahead and remake it. I've already deleted most of the rooms and moved all the stuff that I'm trying to save into the lounge. Hello, Jimmy. Calm down. So the first thing I did was exit out of the base and see what happens when I come into the base. As I mentioned in a previous video, you are always facing the same direction no matter how you enter the base. With that done, I modified the plot so that the entrance would be in this lower left hand corner. The northeast corner as it would turn out. I've already created some new rooms because now I have an idea of what I'm going to be doing here. We're going to have a workshop, an arsenal, and this is where transportation is going to be handled. This is going to be command and control, and this is going to keep being the lounge. So, first up, we're going to need a style. We already have the Hirano wooden style. Which I rather like for the hunting lodge. They're a clandestine group. They're quiet. Exceptionally quiet. Like The idea is that they're grassroots monster hunters in the same vein as what you would find in Hunter the Reckoning. So, we apply that style to the base. Now everything is wooden. The lighting is a nice, soft, dark brown. Makes the place seem almost inviting, like something you can take a nap in. Despite the serious nature of the organization, the hunting lodge is still full of people, with the concerns of people. So, first up, we have to organize these. Now, when I remade my alien base, the Terrestrian Alliance, I had just cludged everything into one room because that was a complete and utter overhaul. There was no opportunity to do what I'm doing what I've done here. Where I have organized these different racks so that I know that these are the common ones. These are the uncommon ones, these are the rares, this is costume salvage. The one difference is, I have no idea what's in this one. I think it's more common salvage. So, we start with one of the bits of common salvage. Go ahead and put that there. Now, as you can see, it's caused this baseboard to 
get removed. There's no room for the baseboard. A friend of mine demonstrated that he doesn't like these anyway, so he just goes ahead and clicks none. And they all go away for that room. And I can apply that style to the base. Now they're all gone. Same can be done with these. And now they're all gone. I'm not entirely sure what those baseboards are meant for or the ceiling trim some players use them for added style but the fact that they just vanish whenever anything gets too close to them it just makes them seem like superficial fluff but I'm sure that there's people out there who like them The particular character that I'm playing on is somebody I call Kodiak Green. He's based on the character of a friend. Not... Not a City of Heroes character. When I was in high school, my friends and I did backyard wrestling. One friend of mine chose for his character name Kodiak. Now, one of the problems with a single name character name is that in any work of fiction there are plenty of people who have single name character names. Marvel and DC have thousands of characters that operate with single name character names. And when I first started playing City of Heroes one of the first things I did was go to make a character with a single name character name. I thought I was clever. I can't even remember what the name was. I got irritated and then decided just to use the guy's civilian name, which made me realize, oh wait, people usually don't make two name characters. So when I went to make all of my characters backyard wrestling character, no, let me rephrase that. When I went to make all of my friends' backyard wrestling characters into characters in this game, I had to take all of their oh-so-clever names like Solo, Rage, and Kodiak and give them all a two-name twist. Draven turned into Draven Erickson, a play on the name Eric Draven from the movie The Crow. Consider the fact that was the basis of the character in the first place. Said friend chuckled a little bit at that. When I first made Kodiak, well, at the time I hadn't even considered making the character, but then one day he found out about 
what I'd done and was like, well, hey, have you made my character into a character? And I was like, okay, well, what superpowers do you want? And this was his response. Can I have two guns? I asked him what kind of superpower he wanted, and he asked if he could have two guns. To shed light on the absurdity of this question, my older brother, who was there with us at the time, started laughing hysterically, and then went, this is a game where you can have almost any power imaginable. And you ask if you can have two guns. Look, man, we can go to Walmart right now and buy two pistols. So, realizing how silly the request was, my friend decided to amend his choice in superpower and went, well, can I jump real high? This, of course, got us laughing uproariously. And so, I had to regretfully inform him that at the time, I could not make a character with two pistols who can jump real high. That set would not be released for another two weeks. But, here he is. Two pistols, and he jumps real high. That wasn't even as high as he could jump. It's just that we're indoors. Okay. That is the rare shelf, so I'm going to go ahead and slap that there. Costume pieces. Find your thing that there. Like I said, this is going to be the workshop. that's it. That is pretty much everything you need for a functioning workshop. It's a bit bland though. These used to do something. They don't anymore. But now it looks like an actual workbench where you make magic shit. And then there are these. As I said before, these make buffs. They're one of the ways you can radically modify how your character performs in a, for about an hour. You can boost their recovery rate, their regeneration, their resistances, their defenses their movement speeds. It's a really useful really useful piece to have in the base.
Now the next room is going to be the armory. And there I'm going to be putting the inspiration benches. And the enhancement tables. And with that, the entrance is now clear. And the lounge is mostly empty. Now what's going on here? I've got these bookcases, these bookcases, sitting in front of the doorways. Well, they're not supposed to be there. So, we make new doorways. That still doesn't work, does it? And it probably never will. But it will work here. This globe will have to be moved over here, along with this chair. And this chair. And this couch. The idea here is that you've got a place where a group of the older huntsmen will congregate and relax and talk about some of their various hunts. <laughs> Quite right. got a bunch of old books that they'll look into. This isn't a very full library they've got here though. But there are options. And since these are magicians, as well as military men and technologists, they use anything they can. We can take some of the mystical bookshelves and slap them up ooh magic they also provide some control Desks where they can write stuff. An augury table. Can bring up object information.
I don't normally look into the info of the various items. The augury table. From here, orders can be sent and plans can be made. This table increases the amount of control available for your base. The seer desk. From here, orders can be sent and plans can be made. This is why I don't usually check the information. There's usually not much to read. This is a rare globe of the world made in the 1700s. Invalid string parameter. Invalid string parameter. Placing this will add a light source to the room. Invalid string parameter. I don't expect the homecoming crew to fix any of these, but it does get kind of funny when you bring up bath and kitchen and bath and kitchen. Bathroom soap one. The first rule of Freak Club is you do not talk about Freak Club. The second rule of Freak Club is you do not talk about Freak Club. Third rule of Freak Club: someone revives, flies away, or hero interrupts. The fight is not over. Fourth rule. Only two freaks to a fight. <laughs> but then there's bathroom soap too, in valid string parameter. So the homecoming crew has added a lot of really interesting stuff to the bases. I don't know the story behind it. I guess this is stuff they did during the six years between City of Heroes' is shutting down and the eventual leak that there was an actual private server that was being run. In the meantime, we've got all of this stuff to play with, so I don't care to dig into it too deeply. There's a bunch of arcane material in here that just doesn't really suit a room like this. Arcane weapon rack. Ugh. But we do have other bookshelves that can be used. Fits snugly right there. Even has a little skull. And that is what goes into the basic crafting of your bases in City of Heroes. Yeah, pour through the many, many, many options that are available to you. find something that you think will work. Hmm, had a brief stutter there. So that's crafting. This is arsenal. Now, since this is arsenal, I figure I should have somebody in here to function as the quartermaster. my choices of a Vanguard Quartermaster, a Midnighter Quartermaster, or an Arachnos Quartermaster. I really do hope the Homecoming crew expands on this NPC listing. I really, really like that they made it that we can put NPCs in our bases, even if most of them we can't interact with. Midnighter Quartermaster is very various versions of Magician. 
and right now they're all spawning as a librarian. Yeah, come on, come on. Weed, weed, weed. Vanguard quartermasters are armored up military types. And Arachnos quartermasters are armored up supervillain types. Because Arachnos is the supervillain organization of the game. Now I'm thinking I'm going to stick with the Vanguard Quartermaster because that's the sort of person who would function as the Quartermaster of a group like this. And that happens all the time. You move an NPC, they change race and gender all the time. Well, except for these. Standard NPCs, they'll change their outfit and their race. But they won't change what they're doing. It's an interesting approach to the NPCs. I think it's actually in the City of Heroes hard code. You see it pop up from time to time in various missions where it's like, okay, I gotta go rescue these people. And you go to rescue them and it's like, huh, that's not the same model that was used in the last mission. So we got a quartermaster over there. This arsenal, however, is looking kind of light. So I'm going to do like I did in another base. I'm going to put in some desks. I want rustic desks. Now why am I putting in some desks, you might ask? Because desks easily have things stack on top of them, even other desks. Back in the old days, that was how you got things to levitate. Woo woo, magic desk. It was a painstaking process. A lot of base designers didn't like it, and others were probably just autistic enough where it didn't bother them. Yeah, yeah, I know. Don't say autistic or whatever. Use it as a, an explanation of behavior. I don't know. I'm getting it from Black Pants Legion. And I think it's an adequate enough explanation as to why people do what they do sometimes. Especially what I'm about to do right here. Well, this might be more along the lines of uh, OCD. Because what I'm trying to do is that. Getting these desks to match up with the pattern on the wall. Mm -hmm. Probably don't need this many desks, but I'm putting them in anyway. Because the more storage space you can put in a place, the more you can hand wave it as those drawers are full of bullets and tools. Bullets and tools. No 
we go to the weapons tab. It is full of weapons. All kinds of weapons. And weapon racks. Displayed weapons. And then I mix it up from here. Now the reason why I'm putting up the pretty much military weapons and not the Nemesis Long Rifle or the Arachnos Mace, even though I'm using Arachnos weapons, is because these are very specialized weapons not likely to be used by your average monster hunting soldier. For these weapon racks the idea is to have stuff that's readily available for them to grab at a moment's notice. Then there's stuff like these. That's the Council Sonic Gun, which is actually something they would want to have ready at a moment's notice. In game, these are actually some of the most dastardly weapons that you can be hit by. Because in City of Heroes, sonic attacks reduce your damage resistance. So the more of these you get hit by, the harder the hits you're taking. So, since I'm trying to set this group up with some more logic behind it rather than just, ooh, I'm going to make a base that radiates from the center and that I easily get lost in. I'm trying to put some rhyme or reason into why these rooms are the way they are. The Carnival of, Shadow of Shadows Mallet. Nobody even uses this weapon. Why did they even put this in the game? Like, the Carnival of Shadows is an enemy group that has strong men. Big, bulky guys wearing big metal bucket helmets. They're all super strong and super tough and have really weird scratch marks on their back. You think that the Paragon developers and the Cryptic developers had intended those to be whip slashes, but that's not exactly what the scratches look like. Anyway, they're super strong characters. None of them use this as a weapon. Even the Homecoming developers must have caught on because now it's just called the Mallet. Heck, they even changed the name of the Council Sonic Rifle to just Sci-Fi Rifle. Got another Arachnos Mace, but again, that's not what I want them using. Then there's Richty Rifles, when you need a really big energy weapon. That's what the Richty Rifles used to look like. But they don't anymore. There was an update years back where they updated the Richty models so there were no more naked Richty. The various 
power armored Ricky wound up with weapons that were fused into their armor, and the ones that weren't power armored used mm, different stylized blasters. So these rifles disappeared. Are. More Richty weaponry. The Richty blaster. Another Richty rifle. A bigger Richty rifle. The Richty shotgun, which never appears in game, and nothing like that ever happens, would be would have been an interesting approach. Who knows, maybe these are pieces left over from a scrapped idea for a Richty epic archetype. Man, that would have been interesting. What's missing is the current Richty blaster, which looks like a combination of a high-tech energy axe and an energy rifle. can be put into display cases. We got a longbow, Jack and Irons' his club, and nothing else in particular. Mm. So, we get to focus on other weaponry. Since I have more shelf space, I'll go ahead and put some more Richty weaponry here. Another shotgun. And another carbine. And of course there's the Richty swords. Of course these aren't used by the Richty anymore either. Instead, they're used by their sub-faction, The Lost. Spoiler warning. Although, when I first started playing City of Heroes, I saw The Lost and saw the weapons they were wielding and went, Oh, so the Richter are just mutated humans. A lot of players saw that as some sort of really... horrific spoiler. I... Frankly, I didn't get it. The Sapper, one of the most feared weapons in the game, doesn't do any damage, but it does drain all of your energy away. Currently, my friends and I are joking that the Malta Group, which fields these weapons, hands them to their newbies or whoever they don't like because heroes and villains alike the moment they see a sapper gun it's like kill that guy first <laughs> we've got assault rifles wielded by the council and the Malta group. Then there are the smaller assault rifles, although these are more like submachine guns.
chain guns, although these are actually mini guns. Although these would probably qualify as chain guns. Difference between a chain gun and a mini gun. Mini gun is multi barrel, chain gun is single barrel. The funny thing is that this would probably be more along the lines of an assault cannon. Sadly, there is no power set in the game that allows you to wield one of these. There are enemies that get to use those, but not players. We've got grenade launchers. While there are powers that allow us to shoot grenades, we never get to wield one of these either. Instead, we run into enemies wielding those. Various boxes of ammunition. I'm not going to be putting those here because those are in the drawers. There's a method to my madness. Ah, the Franken gun. The original assault rifle of City of Heroes. If your character was an assault wheel rifle wielding character, then they had access to the Franken gun. It has an assault rifle system, a flamethrower system. And a shotgun system. All rolled into one. Ridiculous weapon. I still have not seen another assault rifle playing character use one of these in recent memory. It looks like it will explode in your hands. We had to use these all the time in the old days of City of Heroes until one day the developers realized, oh wait, we can customize the weapons. The Franken gun went the way of the dodo as people started wielding more realistic rifles. And now these the laser weaponry. We don't get to use these in the game. I don't know if Homecoming is planning on doing something about that or what. But it is kind of neat to throw around a bunch of laser shotguns in your base. And dream of the future. A future that one day I said would never come. But then Homecoming started making new content. That made me very happy. The Eon Strike Force is something I really wish the Paragon devs had done. I'm happy with what the Homecoming devs made. It is an excellent, excellent Strike Force. And it just makes me so mad that most people just blaze through it as quickly as possible because they they want the 
they want the interesting loot at the end. They don't care about the story. Pistols, 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 where are they? There's the revolver. And there's the pistol. The machine gun, not quite the same as the assault rifle. Kind of wondering how they made that. There we have it, an arsenal. This room, I'm going to have to change the style because this is not going to be a room. This is going to be open air. Now we need to pick the stock. No, placing items. Apply that to the room. Now we have more space to work in. Actually, I'm going to keep that and get on here and apply that to the room. So we still have the floor, but now we pick the style and you, I want open sky. So now there's no more ceiling. This room is going to be dedicated to transportation. At this point, the wood paneling seems a bit superfluous, a bit out of place. So do we go with high-tech walls? Do we go with smooth technology? We're going to go with an industrial look. I think I'll go with high tech. Remove those, just like before. So the very high walls, high tech three, high tech, high tech, there we go. Get the same pattern. The flooring probably look better with something that looks reinforced. Don't want to do tech rubberized. That's what you put in a lab.
That's what industrial flooring looks like. Could be more factory. That'd be a factory. Dingy. Meant for sewer settings, but could also function as like an abandoned factory. The tech grid meant for indoor high tech science labs. I usually use those for when I want a clean room, like in a hospital or laboratory setting. Tech rubberized, like I said, for a lab, typically one that would be using a lot of energy. Gravel. Oh, we're going to be having some helicopters in here, so gravel's not really the way I want to go. So, I'm going to stick with this uh, reinforced high tech flooring. Now would I be using teleportation systems? Like the telepads I've been using in other bases. No, I think not. It's the Vanguard portal, interdimensional shard. Tells you on the right here what can be connected to it. The black hole the white hole. Okay. The small portal commonly found in arcane teleportation rings. The large portal also found in arcane teleportation rings. But what I'm going to do instead the wrong one. I'm going to go to vehicles. We can put all kinds of different vehicles in here. The Osprey is an interesting bit. Excuse me, I gotta go AFK. I let my dog out. My apologies. Now, the Osprey, or the V-22 chopper, they call it in this. You know, in all actuality, this is not an Osprey. Ospreys are transport vehicles meant for hauling cargo. This is a VTOL combination between an Osprey and a hind gunship. Just a moment. Goofy yelling cat in the background, had to let him outside. But yeah, this is like a combination of a Osprey and a hind gunship, like the classic Russian helicopter. And unfortunately, it cannot help us. What can help us is the Vanguard helicopter. Question is, where to park it? I'm 
You don't want it to be chopping into the wall, destroying those rotors and carving up the wall. And there we go. But how will they know where to go, you might ask? Well, that's when we go back to this. Tech teleport and arcane teleport. These come with beacons that you can use to tell your various transporters where to send your player. So this first one is going to be largely dedicated to Paragon City locations. So that's Atlas Park, Brickstown. Founders Falls, Independence Port, Kings Row, Skyway City, Steel Canyon, Talos Island, and I skipped over it, Peregrine Island. Each transporter can take 10 beacons, so May as well just go ahead and throw Callisti Wharf in there. Then we head over here. This is going to be the red side places. So, we start with Mercy Island. Diab. I'm sure that there are people pronouncing Cap Au Diable, a French speaker once pronounced it as Cap Au Diable, and I can't stop doing that now. Sharkhead Isle, the Nerva Archipelago, the red side version of Independence Port. St. Marshall or Villain Vegas and 
Granville. Now I've got room for other locations here. So I may as well go ahead and make these some of the hazard zones. Not Boomtown. Fault line. Croatoa and Dark Astoria. That's really all the room we have for two helicopters. So, what about all these other locations? Well, these are going to require teleportation systems, portal units, telepads, the advanced telepad, I'll go with the portal unit. Now, where am I going to send people with this one? Well, I'm going to focus on yeah. Sorry for a second, I didn't I wondered if I, if I forgot Brickstown, but no, I did not. I don't like that cut off there. There it is. A little bit further. There we go. This one is going to send to the more obtuse hazard zones. Craze Folly, no, Boomtown, Craze Folly, Eden. Mm, where else can I send people with this one? Ah, the Hollows. War zone as well. Ah, yes, and Terra Volta. The basic hazard zones of, of Paragon City. Bleh, why couldn't I say that? Ah, yes, Striga Isle. I still have room for There we go. Three more places, huh? Mm. Let's link you up to the Storm Palace. Chantry and the Cascade Archipelago. Shadow Shard locations. Some of the more bizarre story building from City of Heroes that got very little utilization, all things considered.
but there's still more locations. So we plunk down another teleporter. And we'll get some of the interdimensional locations that aren't those three. Such as the Night Ward. First Ward. Pocket D. Nova Pretoria. Imperial City. Uh, might as well throw Firebase Zulu here, because I've got nowhere else to put it. And why isn't there a beacon for Neutropolis? Or am I just not seeing it? That was Park, Boomtown, Brickstown, Cap Out Diab, Cascade Arc. Polygo, The Chantry, Trace Folly, Croatoa, Dark Astoria, Eden, Fault Mine, Firebase Zulu, Founders Falls, First Ward, Granville, The Hollows, Imperial City, Independence Port, Callisti Wharf, King's Row, Mercy Island, Nerva Archipelago, Night Ward, Nova Pretoria, there's Neutropolis. I do believe that is all of them. Most of these places are in the alternate Earth of Praetoria, where superheroes rule and the world is a miserable place. Because doesn't that always be the case? So, now it's time to go ahead and put some kind of roofing over these portals. I can't just put a ceiling over those because it'll put a ceiling over everything. So I need to figure out something else to do. There are a lot of different options. Let's see, landscape. Looking for something that has some roofs.
structure. I want to use something that will be visible from below because some of these details aren't visible from below. Hmm. That should do it. That should do nicely. I mentioned the magic desks earlier. This is a neat function where you're able to just hold down the shift key and that just changes the elevation of the object in question as you hold down the left click mouse button. I don't know how that works for Mac users. There we have it. We have a roof for the actually not dangerously unstable portals. But I still want them to be protected. I also want these structures to look like they can stand Let's do that. Mm -hmm. Let me go to dividers. Let's just go ahead and delete those. Use these instead. one's going to be here.
and sadly they don't quite match up. That's too small. I'll move this pillar. Yeah. And one of them's not in place anyway. And there we go. A mostly closed in portal section. Oh, that was a headache and a half. There is one more thing I need to do. So the helicopters don't have their people. My friends and I have speculated on this. I probably need to leave the map. And no better time to test than now. deliberately changed the direction I was looking and here I am still facing south. No, they 
still don't have the people. Hmm. Maybe it just takes time. I don't know. But I do have another method of dealing with it. And it also has other practical uses. Yeah, that's about as close as I want them to be anyway. This is what I did in another one of my bases. And the reason why was because of the problem I'm having right here. But it also has other practical applications. See, when Vanguard operatives wind up at the cargo bay of these helicopters, they'll function as teleporters. I'll be able to click on the guy and get transported to a place. However, it operates on the same system that the game's railway system uses, which takes a moment to pause before sending your character from one location to another. I don't know why they do this. I don't know if it's immersion. I don't know if it's supposed to reduce the stress on the servers. But teleporters like the ones that I just put inside these helicopters, or even just these two here, are instantaneous travel. I click on that teleporter, it'll give me one of these locations, I click on that location, and there I go. No need to wait for anything. But when the Vanguard operatives show up here, I'll click on one of them, one of these locations will show up, and if I'm at just the wrong time, I could be waiting for up to a minute to be sent to my location. Yay! The tram transports in Paragon City at least have the visual effect of you seeing, hey, the car just got here. <laughs> or the car just left. So... know what they were going for. I'm going to move these. Wrong one. When you find yourself moving an object, just go ahead and hit the escape key. That is, if you didn't want to move that object. It'll save you from having to replace it. Hmm, something's not right. Well, everything's in the same positions I left them in. And sadly, those clippings will always be there. There's nothing I can do about that. Those, using those, 
doesn't tell me. That does. And that. And so that's the transportation area of the hunting lodge. Now, control and power. For here, I think I am going to go ahead, raise the roof, and lower the floor. Apply that to the room. Because what I'm going to put in here is one of the largest. most obtuse objects in the game, the Autonomous Expert System. This thing is massive. But if you want your organization to look like it's got the highest tech, this is what you go with. But I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to move you over here and as into the corner as you can go because there's the arcane version of this. The Mystic Ori. you over here. <sighs> Always fun to see when they screwed up with the text string. Motions of the planets and stars. I'm guessing it's supposed to say that Mystic Ori allows you to track the motions of the planets and stars, allowing you to choose the most auspicious moments for weaving powerful control spells. These spells are necessary to bind the energies of all security devices in your base and keep them functioning properly. Oh boy. I just hate when the information gets cut off, especially if it's cutting off the beginning. Like, how is this sentence supposed to begin? Latest experimental technology and software programming to create a true synthetic intelligence. This is supposed to be an AI. While its function is limited to security systems, the processing ability of this AI is such that it can handle all but the most demanding base needs. I'm guessing that week when people's bases turned against them and started shooting them with the turrets they set up, these things were the reason. I still wish they would find a way to implement that, but it's hard to program in that which was achieved through a mistake. Get back over there. Okay, so. Yeah, plunk that into the corner. Again, the idea here is that this organization uses anything they can use to combat the forces of evil, monsters that would prey on humanity. Whether they're using magic or science, 
they don't particularly care and they don't really regard one as being inherently better than the other. Now that's a bunch of control. There's something missing. It might even be part of the reason why there's nobody there at the helicopters. These should not be able to function right now. The reason why is because they're technically unpowered. So we need power. We can use a dimensional vortex Something so goddamn massive it takes up an entire room. The technology version is the fusion generator. That's right, you too, your average citizen, can have access to nuclear power beyond the ken of modern day technology. Or we can use a nice simple turbine generator. But these things are cluttering an already cluttered room. So what does that mean? It means we need to create a new room. I can keep using the mouse wheel or I can just hold the end key there. Fully zoomed out. Doorways, small rooms, medium rooms, large rooms, and huge rooms. Huge rooms are bigger than this particular plot. Except for that one. But I don't have room to put that one. These narrow corridor rooms were meant for bases with the idea that they'd be getting raided. The idea being that you take one of these corridor rooms and you fill it full of crap, specifically traps, so that people would wind up on one side, they'd start running through and run into all of your different landmines, slow fields, and automated turrets that would just start blazing away at them as they try to get into your base and steal your stuff. Yeah, just delete that room. It was an interesting idea for a system. It never really functioned all that well. And sadly, Paragon Studios just never had the resources to commit to it. Yes, yeah, so let's put the power next to the helicopters.
This is what your average room looks like when it's first loaded in. Now, since this is energy, I'm going to go ahead with a rubberized floor. Or I could go with an ancient stone floor, depending on the depending on the power I put in. But I still think that rubberized really would be the better way to go. Walls, I'm figuring that we would just brick them in. be a high ceiling applied to the room. What to use for the ceiling style? Factory latches. The arcane complex. Yeah. So, tech power, we get the fusion generator. And we put it over there. We get the dimensional vortex. We put it over there. We adjust the dimensional vortex so it's more or we can just make it a dirty secret. Dimensional vortex and fusion generator blended together. <laughs> Blended with a turbine generator. Oh, it's too big. Let's go. This.
mono resonators. Here we have it. Basics of the new hunting lodge base. And that only took me... I don't know how long that took me. Oh, almost two hours I've been doing this. Wow. Well, that's the biggest video I've done. Probably the biggest video I'm going to make. YouTube is probably going to hate me for this, but I've seen other long ones. So... That's all I've got for you for the moment. I'll probably end up tweaking this off camera and give you another tour later on. Thanks for watching and have a good one.